What's up, boys? It's Nick from Team Table 501 here. I'm the king of the scrubs, and today I'm bringing you a brand new Ixalan standard deck tech, believe it or not. Uh, you know, the meta's been shifting a little bit, and my buddy really wanted to play control. So I basically, I'm not going to say I got ripped off, but I kind of did. So my control deck is gone. So I needed to build something for a relatively low price. And uh, this is the deck I picked. This is Mono White Vehicles. Uh, I knew I wanted to go Mono White simply because I like the play style of the deck. Not necessarily that it's aggressive, but it, that it just goes wide. It brings me back to my Aristocrat deck. And that was a deck that really... I loved playing that deck. That deck was so much fun. And that deck was actually playable. Like, that deck was good. Almost made top of the game day with that deck, but... Uh, I just love how wide this deck can go. I also love how big it can this deck can go. You can easily put 20 power on the board by turn 5. This deck is amazing. Uh, this is a lot similar to the list that just made top 8 at the Baltimore Classic. Uh, but I changed a few cards simply because I'm not paying money for Chad, a.k.a. Gideon of the Trials. I just... That card is way too expensive. I don't want to spend money on it, so... Uh, and there are some proxies in here. I'm poor. I, I got most of the deck last night. Uh, but I do have physical copies of the proxy card as well, so, like, I have a couple copies, but... You know, but you can build this deck, if you don't have any of the cards at all, you could probably build this deck for around $70. Uh, probably even cheaper if you cut a couple of the expensive cards. But, like, you can get the core of this deck for 50 bucks probably. This deck is pretty good, so... I'm going to run through the deck list. Uh, like I said, it's incredibly similar to the Baltimore list, although a few of the cards has changed, and a lot of the cards on the sideboard I have changed, so I can beat the control matchup, since that's really prevalent at my meta. Uh, so four Chef at Dunes. This card is insane. A lot of servo production is in this deck, so making your servos 2-2s two means that your opponent's 1-1s one can't just block them. They have to throw a real creature in front of your token, and that is a win for you. Uh, two copies of Field of Ruin. I do not want to deal with Search for Azkanta or Legion's Landing. Those are cards that can easily take over the game. Like, any of the flip enchantments, really, they can take over the game if they flip. Uh, this can blow up just, like, problematic lands. Like, if they're playing Hostile Desert or against, like, a ramp deck, you can need to blow up one of their deserts so that they don't get zombies off of Hour of Promise. And then, uh, one Savager Grounds. I wanted Main Deck Graveyard Hate for God Pharaoh's Gift and for Control, so... And then the, I believe I'm playing 15 planes, 3, 6, 9, 12, yes, 15 planes, so 22 lands in total. Uh, the mana base is pretty cheap, <laughs> a bunch of planes, and a couple uncommons, and a rare, that's really cheap. Moving on to the creature base, I play 14 creatures in this deck, 4 toolcraft exemplar, this is the one drop you always want to start off with, this is the one drop you always want to have access to. A 1-1 one, one for 1 white. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have an artifact, it gets plus 2, plus 1, so it turns into a 3-power creature. And if you have 3 or more artifacts, which can happen a lot in the deck, it gets first strike as well. So that part is really relevant, because it means that it can swing in, it can eat a Long Tusk Cub if it doesn't have enough counters, it can eat a Whirler Virtuoso, it can eat all the X3s, it can eat a Rampaging Ferocidon. <laughs> like, that is insane. So... Uh, four copies of Sacred Cat. This is exactly from the, the list in the Classic. I know, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this card. Uh, the life-linking body is really nice. The Embalm is really nice. The fact that a lot of the vehicles in the deck are Crew 1 is really nice, because it means that this can crew them. This can crew them. But I, I just... This card is really underwhelming sometimes, especially against Control. So... But against, like, Teamer and Mono Red, it's, it's a pretty good card. So I think it's going to stay in the deck. Although I may end up replacing it with uh, Bishop's Holder, the 2-2 two -two for 2 lifelinker, even though it doesn't have Embalm. Uh, the best creature in the deck, by the way, is Sram, 4 full copies. The list of the Classic only played 3, I'm choosing to play 4 because this card is that damn crucial to the deck. You need access to this card. So it's 2-2 two -two for 2, Legendary Creature. Whenever you cast an Aura, Equipment, or Vehicle, you draw a card. Excuse me for a second. <laughs> Fuck Michigan weather, anyway. <clears throat> so whenever you... Essentially, this is whenever you cast a vehicle, draw a card. It's when you cast it. So even if it gets countered, you still draw on a card. So this is insane. Like, I know it's legendary and all, but this is just the card you want to play it on turn two. If you're not playing a Heart of Karen on turn two, you're playing this on turn two. And then my last main deck creature, two copies of Fairgrounds Warden. Uh, this is actually amazing. The fact that this doesn't die to Magma Spray is super important. 
And it can exile Hazoret, exile Scarab God. You know, exile just the big dumb creatures that you don't want to deal with. It can even exile Bristling Hydra, and it can, like, bait out uh, spells in your opponent's hand. That does it for the creatures. Moving on, two of the spells. <laughs> four copies of Servo Exhibition and four copies of Sram's Expertise. These cards are insane. They're the reason the deck is so good <laughs> outside of the vehicles. Just the ability to go wide is super important against Teamer and Mono Red, especially against Mono Red because they also go wide, but they also beat your face in. And the fact that these just these keep just throwing artifacts on the board. And these are also creatures that can crew your vehicles if your Peace Walker Colossus does. And I'll get to that when I get to that card. Uh, and also very interesting too is that you can Strand's Expertise and then cast Servo Exhibition. That's four mana for five power. That's dumb. Oh, like, yeah, you're going to lose to board wipes, but there's not really that many main deck board wipes other than Fumigate. But you can usually kill them before Fumigate resolves, or you just don't care about Fumigate, depending on how good your hand is. Two copies of Thopter Arrest. These will be Exelon's Binding, but I don't have them. Uh, essentially, this is just one mana cheaper for an Exelon's Binding. Uh, this card's actually pretty good, because being able to play this on turn 3 means you can get rid of the Ferocidon, you can get rid of Oncrab Crasher, you can even hit, like, a turn 3 Chandra. Target Artifact. Oh, or just Creature, never mind, I'm just dumb. But hitting a turn 3 Bristling Hydra, this is really good, forcing them to use their Hexproof. Uh, and then 2 Cast Out, the Flash is super important. You, It may be correct to play 4 Cast Out, but I just want the 3 mana thing. Uh, plus, th this can deal with Whirler Virtuoso on turn 3 as well, and that's pretty important. Uh, you need, you know, the cycling in this is really good, the flash is really good, the fact that it can hit Planeswalkers is really good. For the, this is where the proxy starts. So, 4 Heart of Karen, I only have 1. My LGS only had 1. Press F. But, uh, this is dumb. And there is a trick to this card. Most Marty Vehicle players know this, but for those of you who don't. So, let's just say, uh, you have both of a Toolcraft Exemplar and a Heart of Karen on the battlefield. You go to Combat. This is going to trigger, making it a 3-2. Before you declare your attackers, you're still, in the, uh, you're still in the beginning of combat. You can tap Toolcraft Exemplar to crew the Heart of Karen, and now Heart of Karen can attack. So that's that's a really important trick. That is one of the main ways you actually can beat a control deck. Because it essentially means that their sorcery speed effects don't work against you. They have to have, their hand needs to be loaded of instants. Which sometimes they don't have. You know, sometimes they just don't have an abrade. Abrade's not really seeing much play. So these usually live on turn 2. And this card's actually only around 4 to $5 a copy, so picking up a playset should not be difficult. And then 4 Aether Sphere Harvester. You need this for the life gain, really. And the Crew 1 is super important. Also, if you run out of creatures, or let's just say like you've embalmed a Sacred Cat, embalming Sacred Cat can crew the Harvester, and then the Harvester can crew Heart of Karen so you can get in for more damage. That's just something neat. So this is the spell that you want to play on turn 3. And then the best card in the deck, and the last card in the deck, 4 Peaceworker Colossus, 6-6 six, six for 3. You can pay 1 in a white, and another target vehicle you control becomes a creature, and it has crew 4. Not important, this is basically a 6-6 six, six for 6 that turns on your other vehicles. So essentially 2 mana is going to auto-crew all of your vehicles. And if you get 2 of these on the battlefield, it's disgusting. If you get 2 of them out, you can have 1, You can let's just say this one crews this one, and then if you have four mana, if you have four mana, you can have this one crew this one, and then have this one crew this one off of their activated ability, so you can just get in for twelve. Just the fact that this is a six six is so big, and it's so relevant to the deck. So that's gonna do it for the main deck. Sixty cards. Uh, if you want to play like Ixalan's Binding, that's it. If you want to play Gideon of the Trials, that's actually really good because you can remove the loyalty counter to hit the Heart of Kieran, and it means that it can also still use an ability that turn, which is pretty good. Uh, but again, this is sort of a budget deck. Moving on to the sideboard, uh, just some tokens. Four copies of Glorybound Initiate. This is really important against Mono Red and sometimes against Control. Control is very, it's a very weird matchup because you can grind them out, but they just have a better late game than you do. So if you're on the draw, you need to be incredibly aggressive. You need to kill them as quickly as possible. And this card's pretty good at doing that. Like it dies to everything, but if you get to untap with this card, it's, <clears throat> it's pretty good. And it has three power, so it can crew the Heart of Kirin. Uh, three Master Trinketeer. This can buff the Servo, so against, like, Teamer, 
and against just like the black white tokens deck esper tokens mono white vampires like those like mid-range matchups they're just all about going wide and this card helps you do that by making your creatures bigger and against control it is a bit of a mana sink like you'll you'll always usually have four mana so making a two two is just really good so Uh, two copies of Sky Wheeler Shot. This is a three mana instant that can destroy target creature with power of three or greater. You can describe one. Mostly for Teamer. Also to Mono Red to an extent because it can kill Oncrop Crasher. You gotta kill. <sighs> you gotta kill Rampaging Ferocidon. You just do. So being able to kill those cards is, is really important as well. So there is that. And then I play two Fragmentizes, uh, killing vehicles in the mirror match, or um, a vehicle's mirror match. This can blow up Panharmonicon if you need to blow up that. It can blow up uh, Gate to the Afterlife so they can't fetch God Pharaoh's Gift. This can hit uh, Authority of the Councils. This can hit Cast Out, Exelon's Binding, stuff like that. So mostly for white decks. Double Gideon's Intervention for Approach of the Second Zone. You just name this, and you basically force them to board in a different win condition, because if they don't, then they literally just cannot beat you. Or if you have a feeling they're going to side out their approach, you can just bring this in, name Torrential Gear Hulk, and then Gear Hulk can't hit you. So again, you, this, this card forces them to have more win conditions in their deck. And then two Sentinel Totem, not only to for Graveyard Hate, just really, I don't want to deal with God Pharaoh's Gift. So there is that. And that is going to do it for the Mono White Vehicles deck tech for Ixalan Standard. Uh, I think this deck is pretty fun. You know, it's just something that, if you like big robots, you, want, you kind of want to play this deck. If you can't afford control, I've definitely played this deck. You know, it's a go wide and go tall deck. Some, that's not something you usually get in a format like this. It's got a pretty, it's got a pretty good team or energy matchup. Uh, Soul Tide Energy is a little bit rough because they have access to one mana removal in the main deck, which is kind of annoying. Uh, the control decks is where you're really going to struggle, but against most mid range and even most of the aggro decks in the format, you have a pretty good matchup. So you just got to take control with a grain of salt. You can usually get game one off of them, but games two and three are pretty rough. So uh, I'll have the link to the deck list in the description down below, just in case you don't want to listen to me ramble. Perfectly fine. Link to my Twitter in the description down below as well. Go follow me on that shit. I'll post random crap all the time. Mostly school stuff, but sometimes I'll have the random Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh tweet there as well. And uh, that's about it. My name is Nick from Team Table 501. Thanks for watching, and get good, scrubs. I'll see you next time.